All right, welcome, 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 everybody. Uh, my name is Joseph Martin. I'm the moderator for this webinar, How to Make Food Content That Pops, right? Um, I've uh, just started working with chefs uh, this year, um, working with the Cannabis Chef Union, and um, I see, it, I see it, the chefs out there working hard. Uh, we got a couple of them on our, on our panel here. Um, I filmed with a couple, couple of them, uh, a few folks in, uh, with Swag House Studios. So I'm just kind of taking, taking this, this knowledge that we've, that we've uh, accumulated and um, you know, we wanted to share it with you guys, okay? Uh, this, this webinar is hosted by the Cannabis Chef Union. Uh, we are lucky enough to have the CEO, the founder, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Brooksy Hustle. Uh, we're gonna, get, we're gonna uh, let you introduce yourself a little bit, Brooksy. Um, Alex, the COO, CFO, man behind the scenes, making sure everything works really well. Um, guys, give them a, give, uh, somebody out there, give them a 30 second pitch for the Cannabis Chef Union. What, who are we? Sure, you know, the Cannabis Chef Union is basically the hub for Cannabis Chefs. What we do is not only do we help Cannabis Chefs get hired in the industry, but what we do is we also help them uh, in their journey uh, along the way in the industry. We uh, help get them sponsored. We help uh, as far as exposure. And uh, like we were talking about earlier, we have a couple of podcasts out there that are really good that the chefs are hopping on, mm -hmm. uh, cooking shows, uh, different kind of blogs and things like that. Just any kind of outlet to really get um, the can of chefs out there uh, to a bigger market, bigger views, all that good stuff. But of course, at the end of the day, uh, we want to see chefs get hired. That's our main goal is to get cannabis chefs hired throughout the industry. We want to see you guys make money. So that's where we're at. And uh, the Cannabis Chef Union is just here to help, you know, in any way possible, any way that we can. Exactly. You know, I've been with you guys for maybe, what, three or four, three or four months now. Um, love it. Love it. Okay. Uh, now let's get into a little bit more uh, of, of you guys. Um, let me introduce myself first. Um, my name is Joseph Martin. I'm a student at uh, Full Sail University studying public relations. I'm working uh, with my man, Brooksy Hustle, Brooksy Hustle and the Cannabis Chef Union. I met Brooksy a few months ago, uh, filmed uh, yeah, uh, associate producer for Cooking with Brooksy, coming this month, Viesel.tv. Um, like I said, I'm getting into the public relations um, realm. I come, I was, I'm a veteran, uh, ret retired in the military, retired from the army. Um, got into some filmmaking, so I'm kind of bringing that, bringing that, um, some of that expertise. Um, yeah, start, got into some startups and learned that marketing was the key. So no matter what idea you have, you know, ideas are a dime, you know, a dime a dozen, you know, good ideas, whatever. It's all about getting it out there, you know, finding your audience, mm -hmm. connecting with the audience, creating the content that resonates with the audience. That's who I am. Okay. Uh, with that, we got a special guest, Chef Wendy Zhang, straight from La La Land, LA. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Brooksy, um, Alex, and Joseph for having me today. Um, I'm a cannabis chef out in LA. Um, and, you know, when I first got into um, cannabis was just through, you know, my, my catering business. Um, we were seeing that there were a um, lack of consumption friendly spaces and there was still so much stigma around consumption and food um, was such a great tool to bring everybody together because food already brings people together and break bread over, you know, the same table through conversations. And when you add cannabis to it, it's just just all the more more enriching um, but you know for and I think for people to come into a space where you know I was hosting a lot of um, underground pop-ups um, you know with other community organizers where we just share each other's experiences because I think at the end of the day that's what connect us to each other to this plant and what's going to really help destigmatize it is um, these kind of lived experiences of how the plan has really benefited our lives. So, um, you know, I um, have a pretty big property um, as of last year um, in Los Angeles. And the reason why I wanted to invest in this space um, is because I want to build a farm to table space, but with cannabis. Um, I actually am a 
um, am a immigrant from Sichuan province of China. And um, a huge part of our Sichuan culture is, um, you know, just playing with the abundance of what the land has to give us. Sichuan has a lot of rivers, a lot of valleys, a lot of mountains. So there's just a lot of diverse landscape that really brings about really a diverse abundance of um, food and spices and ingredients to play with. So, um, you know, I have always been very like farm driven, farm to table driven, um, long before it became a trend and a fad. And, um, you know, just because, um, in, you know, when in China, when my, me and my family, we would, you know, drive out to the countryside, visit farms and really see and connect with the, where the food came from and really understand that experience of people who, um, you know, nurture their farms and how they turn that into food. So um, even though I'm in, you know, Los Angeles right now and, you know, it's, we're in the hub of this urban um, place, um, we're really trying to create this farm to table space in the middle. I'm like five minutes away from the Dodger Stadium. So it's really like in, you know, the middle of Los Angeles and it's big urban sprawl, but um, bringing a little bit of that uh, closeness and connectivity to, um, to the land and to where your food comes from and putting cannabis as a part of it too. Uh, you know, I'm just really, really excited to share that with everyone once it's safe to do so to start hosting events and things like that. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me and what I'm currently working on. Um, and also thank you for having me on this because I've also been diving in deeper to content creation uh, and video streaming and just you know, different ways that we're having to pivot right now uh, because of COVID. Right on, yep. Love, with you. Love what you're doing out there, Chef. Um, I reached out to you, I saw what you're doing on social media. Um, excellent um, kind of template for, for how to do it. Um, I, kind of a cool thing we, we talk about is um, your journey. You know, I, I saw that first post of you, you taking the snapshot of the bacon on the napkin and then, you know, fast forward to now with your, was it, what was it called? The Maui Wowie uh, pineapple upside down cake or something? Yeah, yeah, that was my final submission to the um, to the cannabis contest because you know the the whole contest it was like a set up like a bracket. Uh, you know, we face off eight chefs and then four chefs and then two chefs. So each each nice. round you're doing like appetizer, the main course, and dessert. So yeah, the Maui Wowi cake um, that one uh, you know helped me to the finish line. Um, it, it just, I just really wanted to make it really fun and, you know, and I think that that really came through. Very cool. Nice. Thank you. Nice. All right. Next up, we got, we got the CFO, uh, Alex Juliano, host of a can of chefs podcast on the can of chef union. Uh, make sure you check us out, uh, check, check them out. Uh, the can of chef union, um, YouTube channel, uh, subscribe. Uh, we got excellent content on there. Go ahead and tell them a little about yourself, uh, chef or uh, Alex. Say, not a chef. Don't mistake me for a chef by any means. You're, you're close <laughs> enough just, to the industry, man. <laughs> I'm just a photographer. Let's get that straight. No. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Joe. As, as he said, I'm Alex Giuliano. I'm the COO and CFO of the Canna Chef Union. I'm the host of the podcast, A Can of Chef's Life. And I'm actually the former photographer and videographer at MagicalButter.com. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually where I got my start in the industry, when it, particularly as it relates to photography and videography surrounding food. Um, and ever since I got exposed to it, I, I've always loved it. And it's been a phenomenal journey to be photography, you know, taking great photos and great videos of chefs all across the country. It's, it's been truly an honor and it's been an exciting journey. Nice, nice. And, you know, I've, I've, went, I've gone through a lot of your footage, man. Um, excellent. Love it. So, you know, feel free you. Throughout, this, throughout this webinar, drop those uh, gems of knowledge on this, man. All right, last but definitely not least, we got the founder, C. EO of the Kenneth Chef, Kenneth Chef Union. He's definitely a chef. Ooh. He's the man in front of the camera making it happen, uh, behind the camera making it happen. Um, product developer, uh, excellent product developer. I'll let you, um, I'll let him tell you a little bit about it. Go ahead. Man, um, God, the boss, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you no know, um, I've been doing this a long time. You know, mm -hmm. I've been in the game uh, since I was about 18 years old and I'm 31 now and uh, it's been a wild ride you know I uh, started out you know making edibles and doing uh, 420 uh, t-shirts 
you know, is how I came into the game. And then, um, you know, slowly but surely, I started to see how the industry worked, you know, and started to see how things kind of came about. And really what I did is um, I started to create my own edibles, right, which was just a, a wild thing. And so um, I created the edible grill, which is uh, the same grills that rappers wear, except mm -hmm. you can put this one in your mouth, uh, take a picture or a video, and then you eat it and get high. <laughs> so it's super cool super cool invention that i came up with um you know i have a lot of other edible ideas that are wild but um you know the main thing that i saw in the industry as i was coming along in it is um you know the uh uh having opportunity you know having opportunity available for for people especially people of color minorities you know um having opportunity was was very hard coming up Nowadays, it's gotten a little bit better. You know, we have a lot of outlets now coming up, uh, especially with the union and things like that. But uh, when I first started, man, it was very hard, very, very hard. So, um, you know, not only did I uh, create edibles uh, that you've never seen before, but we also created this platform to give people opportunities in the game, kind of uh, reach out our hand to, you know, people that are just coming into the industry or maybe, you know, they're not as advanced as some of the people on our team or whatever it may be. Um, we're basically there to uh, help you along and uh, give you that leg up, um, mm -hmm. which is exactly why we're doing webinars like this today. Uh, we have podcasts, uh, television shows. I mean, we're, we're doing so much with this union. It's crazy. It Plus getting chefs hired, you know, so it's a beautiful thing. Um, I literally just thought about it because... Uh, I just wasn't getting opportunity. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, the union is a, is a, is a, is a for sure go, you know, let's, let's rock this. So I'm glad to own it. I'm glad to be on the team with you guys. You know, I'm very passionate about it. I'm very passionate for chefs. Um, I just want to see everybody win, you know, that's my main goal. And I just want to see everybody do well in this industry. So uh, make sure you check me out again. I'm Brooksy. You can find me everywhere. I'm very loud everywhere. You see me, I'm loud. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know and just uh yeah keep up with me man because i'm out here doing good stuff that's for sure he is he is all right thanks a lot everybody uh let's move on uh we're gonna do a little um kind of a housekeeping announcement um uh feel free everybody uh feel free to use the chat um if you have any questions we have a q a uh kind of a q a window open uh, that'll allow us to get to it a little bit faster i see that um our panelists might see have a better eyes on the chat so help me out with that um, we're going to come up with a plan for, for distribution of this webinar. Definitely going to be on, uh, the Kenneth Chef, a Ken, or the Kenneth Chef Union YouTube channel. Um, it's streaming live right now on Facebook and it'll be, you know, it'll, it'll be shared. Um, okay. Uh, if you're here, uh, invite your people. Um, it's going to be great information and we're going to jump into it right now. Okay how to create food content that pops. The purpose of this webinar um, is to help you guys understand most of what you need to create content in the kitchen from the planning stage to uh, the posting stage, you know, posting on social media. Um, uh, by the end of this webinar, you're gonna have a solid outline for planning, executing food photography, videography, and uh, carrying out the posting on social media. Um, every one of these points are a jumping off point. You know, there's, there, there are people who devote entire careers to just the photography part of it, you know, uh, just the lighting part of it, you know, so it's, um, you know, you're, you're going to become a jack of all trades, master of real none, but yeah, we'll get there. Okay. All right, let's jump into it. The meat and potatoes pre-production. All right. I always, I always like to start off with uh, what's the purpose of the content. Um, this is, you know, this is something that that, um, you know, we, you learn over the years, you know, it's easy to, to have an idea and just kind of start, start jumping in there, um, creating it. But, you know, what's the purpose of it, you know? And I think this, when you start to understand that, when you start thinking about that, you kind of start um, kind of forming an idea of what, what you want to do for your business, you know? And for the, for the chefs out there, there's a lot, diff lot, lot of different ways to monetize. Um, so uh, what, what do you, do you have any, um, so for each of you uh, panelists, what are some of the, the, the goals for your content? Oh. The chef, Wendy? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so there's a variety of different types of goals you could have, right? And that really mm -hmm. determines all of the other bullets that just 
perspective has on these slides, you know, determines your budget and how, what the scope of this should be. Um, so for me personally, and I think for a lot of cannabis chefs um, out there trying to, you know, do their entrepreneurial thing, put themselves out there, um, you know, a lot of times your, your purpose is for social media, um, you know, so when you're shooting for social platform, it's very different than when you're shooting for, you know, um, like a website that you want to build, your personal website. Um, so all of these different purposes are very different. Um, and the way that you will structure the shoot is very different. Mm -hmm. um, like when I did my shoot for um, drizzle.catering, that's my catering website. So, you know, that look and feel is going to be really, really different. Um, and that shoot, um, the different types of shots that we need to get are very different. So the planning for that, was pretty extensive um, because I actually also, you know, hire one of my friends who's an uh, amazing photographer to come shoot it and I don't want to waste their time, right? And right. so um, for that shoot, we actually did use a, um, like a shot list. And so you kind of plan out what are the different scenes that you need to do. And I would say, um, learning from my own mistake, uh, try not to bite off more than you can chew because um, sometimes, you know, it could be for those who are not as experienced with photography, and I'm sure, you know, um, Alex can speak to this too, where you, you think, oh, it's going to be, uh, you know, for, for our first year, we, we had three different scenes, right? And then I was like, oh, three, we'll, we'll get through that, no problem. But then you're not thinking about all the setup, all the testing, all the, you know, and then it just ended up being a really, really tired and long night. So mm -hmm. I was saying start small and try to um, not, do not skip the planning process, um, especially on a big shoot for, you know, something of like building your website where the, where the shots really need to be really, beautiful it's not like social where sometimes you can get away with having more raw and like lifestyle type of shots yeah. um you know for your website it's like you know we, your 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 canvas to show off the most beautiful shots that your food can be and and i would say for that um you know you really, if you can, and I know, you know, as entrepreneurs, sometimes we don't have all of the resources. So pulling your friends, I think, you know, um, there's so much that goes into executing a shoot that you may think that you can creative direct your own thing, but it's really, really important that, you know, you have a second eye on a lot of these creative di directions because, mm -hmm. you know, as a chef, you're also preparing the food. You're also setting up the plating. You're also making sure the food doesn't look sad and wilted and because it's been sitting there for a while. Right. And so when you have, and, and like, and I think something that I definitely didn't account for that I very much value now um, is um, like the mental space um, for creative direction. So I think having another set of eye who can help you set stuff up, um, you know, someone who's kind of helping to to also manage the um, production, kind of like a production assistant role almost, yep. um, helps a lot, um, you know, because just that mental space, you want it to be clear so that you can center yourself to make sure that um, when you're evaluating what's coming through um, as you're shooting, um, you're able to do it in, with your creative vision and your authentic eyes of um, what you want to put out there. Right on. Yeah, and yeah, everything everything in the pre-production helps. Um, you know, the more you can get to the, I guess, to the where the rubber meets the road on this, you know, coming up with your, like you said, your script, your shot list, your budget, all of that stuff beforehand, especially when you're inviting other people in, uh, you know, the, the creative folks, the photographers, the videographers, that helps out a lot, okay? But I see it as my job on set when I'm filming uh, to handle a lot of that stuff, you know, so that the chefs can, focus on what they need to focus on. So I, I, I'm a, I come from the, an assistant director, AD background, so it's logistics and all of that stuff. So uh, anybody else have anything? I did. Yeah. All right, you can go, Alex. You can go, Alex. I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, yeah. one, one of my thoughts on it in, in particular, and this is kind of a pre-production, but also like what Joe was saying, uh, when you're <clears throat> on set with the chef, it's kind of in the production. There are certain things that you do have to really make sure the chef understands because you may have your back turned and they may do something to the food. Like <laughs> something very common is they'll dress the salad before we've set the shot. It's like, don't, by the time we start shooting, it's going to be soggy. We need to wipe the salad off the plate, clean the plate and put a new salad down. Like there are, <laughs> there are little nuances that you really, 
as as somebody who's not a chef but just a producer and a photographer, you have to have these things spelled out beforehand so that you can give that to the chef before the shoot happens so that when they're on set in the production mode, they're not making those tiny mistakes that cost time and, and sometimes money depending on the shoot. Yeah. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like that that division of labor needs to be communicated really clearly because also you know when you're on set there's so much going on you can also just feel the tension if people don't have role clarity so if everyone knows what exactly they're responsible for um you know it just goes so much more smoothly so yeah do not skip on the creating like a shot list or run of right. show it's just so so important yeah right you got something it, it yeah, you know, it's like it's like the more you plan for something in life, the better it's going to be when you go to attack it, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing with this, you know, the more that you plan uh, for your future on this shoot, the better it's going to turn out. Um, and one thing that, that really I, I always get people to realize, and I'm glad Chef Wendy said this, um, you definitely want a second set of eyes on anything that you're creating because what a lot of us do as entrepreneurs is we create content for us, right? right? Because we're the owners of the business. So we create stuff that we are going to like, but we are not selling to ourselves, right? We are selling to the public. So you have to get a second set of eyes because just because you like it does not mean that the public is going to like it. And that is a huge deal because uh, I, I get caught up with that myself when I make content with the grills. You know, I'll make the content and I'll slap some music to it. And I'm like, oh man, that was hard. I love that, you know? And then I'll put it out there and it'll get 25 views. And then I'm wondering why, you know? And it's because um, I liked it, not my audience. You know, yeah. so you have to, in the planning, also make sure that you're planning to reach your audience the correct way. Um, one of the things, or, or excuse me, three things that I plan for, and I've even done this with Alex, before we shoot content is um, we break it down and we ask ourselves, is the content to make money? Is it to get views or is it for follows? What are we looking to do within those three? Because if it's to make money, our content's going to go a little bit different than if it were to just get views and follows, you right. know, we're going to be a little bit more aggressive in our pitch to get to the money, you know? So um, I think as long as you break it down and know exactly what you're going for, in the beginning, are you, are you looking to get money from this ad? Are you looking to get views? Are you looking for follows? Do you have that second hand of help? Do you have somebody there that's gonna check all your work? Things like that. Um, and then of course the pre-planning, um, you know, making sure like Alex was saying, all your food is appropriate for the camera, nothing soggy, everything's looking right, lighting's good. As long as you do all that pre-plan, um, you should be able to get to those three that I listed in the beginning, money, views, or follows. So, yeah, yep. oh, man, gems, gems. Yeah, it looks like we covered most of this. Um, equipment list, shopping list, chefs are good at this, you know. Uh, you know, you have your, you have your shopping list, what you, wanna, what you need to buy from the store. Um, expand that to an equipment list. What are you gonna need um, for, the, for the shoot? Uh, budget, ongoing, you know, add it. Uh, think about props. Um, yeah, that's one thing you're gonna get good at the more you do. Uh, script. Script is an interesting thing. And Brooksy, uh, you remember what we were doing? It was really difficult. Uh, so when we were filming the cooking shows, um, and this is kind of the video part of it, um, we, when we were filming the cooking shows, it was really hard. It was really difficult, especially since we were kind of doing it live, to have a you know really comprehensive script. So the way I tell the chefs is think about you know think through the process of cooking cooking the the um the dish right make sure you're talking to the audience about why you're doing what you're doing uh what's the significance of the ingredients um put on there like if you have if you if you're going to have a script or like we used to, we used a uh, big whiteboard uh you know dry erase board put in you know for example here or uh, you know after cooking this tell this story you know tell stories about you know like i said why you're why you're cooking what you're doing what's the significance of the dish so just kind of little, little cues like that, you know, and again, this is for um, like if you if you're, you know, creating a video video content. Totally. Uh, you yeah. know, even as recently as I'm um, doing live streams, which I never thought I would do because, <laughs> you know, pre 
pre-COVID, yeah. I was like, I don't want to do live stream. What did you mess up? You can't just hit pause and edit that out. And right. so, um, but you know, that's that's how people want to connect with you right now. You yes. know, people yes. want, people yes. want, people yeah. want you know, like the real connection with Chef. So I was like, all right, let me just get, get a good attitude about it and, and you know, lean into it. And um, and so uh, the, the script and the run of show is something I've been leaning into more now. Um, exactly what you were saying, Joseph, like when, when I'm doing a virtual live cooking class, um, there's going to be moments, I'm, I'm constantly, um, you know, re reminding myself to narrate what I'm doing, even though they can see it, like it's the first time they're seeing it. So you got to narrate what's happening on, on screen. And, yeah. um, and also because they're, they're following along, so they need to know what they need to be doing too. And so along with that, I think what's been really helped, but along with that, the whole time you're thinking about, oh my gosh, is that on fire? Is that getting overcooked? And so having that list as script is really, really helpful. I put mine on a, a little iPad just so I'm not flipping pages when I'm on screen. So I feel like having it on iPad, you can easily scroll and you can kind of hide it off camera. Um, so that's been really helpful and totally on your, uh, what you were just saying about um, planning for the lulls, you know, because sometimes we're going to be waiting for the dish to cook. We're going to be waiting for the water to heat up. And those are perfect moments to insert a little um, anecdote, you know, and to, to story tell and to yeah. be less uh, just informational, um, but also re really, really relatable too. Exactly, thank you, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I actually have ahead. something to add real quick to that, yeah, you know, right. because um, vo voiceovers are also a really good method, you know? Yeah. Um, I see a lot of chefs making videos out there and they'll make videos of their food and everything like that but then expect me to go and read the caption <laughs> <laughs> underneath and the captions this long. And right. I'm like, you could have just said all of that in your video, you know? So um, uh, again, to all the chefs out there, as you're making your videos um, through these apps and everything, it, it's very easy to lay down a, a voiceover. You know, you just step into a room that's very quiet and just lay it down, you know, Hey, this is us over at whatever insert name here. And, this is what we're cooking up today and look at this and you know you could make it sound like a really good infomercial i tell people um to think radio commercials yeah. you know when you're driving on the uh, and you got the radio and you hear them hey come on down to bob's car lot and whatever you know it's all that kind of goofy stuff so you know as long as you come off like that on your video and make it sound really upbeat and everything and clear people will hear your message a lot better through that than they will reading a uh, caption yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then and that that goes up to uh, goes to something we're going to talk about later. Um, testing the content, uh, creating the creating content for that specific platform. So you know, like as you're scro scrolling through um, Facebook, it doesn't, or even Instagram, it doesn't. The, the the audio doesn't come on automatically. So you know, having a little subtitle, um, you know, turn on audio with a little pointer towards the little you know bottom right of the Instagram. You know, that's creating content specifically for um, that platform. Cool. Uh, location scouting. Um, I dropped a, I'm dropping some polls in here. So I'm going to ask everybody, you know, like, um, uh, you know, like right now, uh, which your medium, which medium do you use more photo or video? Um, I'm going to drop one, um, uh, to ask, asking something about the kitchen. Like, is, does your kitchen have uh, great natural lighting? You know? Um, so that's one thing you want to, I, I look at lighting. Um, what, uh, when I'm when I'm looking at the location, um, does it have good natural light, or am I going to have to bring in lights? All of that's going to let you know uh, where are you going to set up the camera. Um, just those are, those kind of things that, you, that you'll learn as you start, um, you know, doing the setups and stuff like that. Uh, rehearsal, um, yeah, rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. Uh, do that. Uh, get to know your equipment. This is an ongoing thing. Equipment, as in the cameras, the audio equipment, the the zoom for example i spent this whole week you know learning zoom um <laughs> yeah it's especially you know in zoom webinars it's a little bit different but yeah and learn your social media channel right um the new what's the what's the i think alex turned us on to the newest thing with um instagram what was it in, like oh the, reels instagram, instagram reels, reels yeah. right it's basically a tiktok competitor you know yeah so and a lot of times when they launch those little features like that, they'll promote that more in their algorithm, you know. 
So it's, it's about, you know, finding it's different ways to create content and finding out what's work, what's what works best for the platform. Cool. And if you haven't seen reels, um, all you have to uh -huh. do on Instagram is go to the search area um, uh -huh. where you see the little search tool down at the bottom. You hit that. And as soon as you hit search, reels are going to be at the top. Um, so you can click on the reel section and go in there and start posting and stuff. Reels is a great thing. I, I, I think reels is the next level and I think they're going to beat yeah. out TikTok eventually to be yeah. honest. Right on. Yeah. I'm, I'm working, I'm working through that. Working through that. Um, choosing your camera, uh, getting to know your camera. I think, uh, I like this panel because we have, um, every, uh, type of camera uh, represented here. I am a, Die hard camcorder. Camcorder. I use the Sony Handycam. Um, like I said, I do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Um, so I haven't really figured out a lot about the lenses. You know, I mean, I can kind of get get by a shoot and stuff like that. But we have Alex. That's um, excellent at um, uh, you know using the lenses and stuff with the photography. Um, and of course, phones these days. Phones these days, man. <laughs> Yeah. So what do you like to, what do you uh, folks like to shoot on? Um, I am not a professional photographer mm -hmm. like Alex. So I love um, shooting on phone. Also yeah. because um, just the technology that there is in the, uh, in the phones now, especially like the new iPhones, it's incredible. You know, right. I just compare some of the pictures I've taken with older iPhones and the newer iPhones. It's just mm -hmm. so, so good. And I also think that, um, I, I actually really like shooting mobile. I, I like the fact that you can just capture content all the time. I know we just talked about the importance of planning, but sometimes you just spontaneously, you know, like happen to be, um, at a really cool spot or eating something really cool and you can't plan for that. And I think the iPhone is so perfect for, um, you know, shooting a lot of that. Also, you know, we, we can get into a little bit later with the post-production part of it, but there's so many good video editing apps now out there um, that are either like free or, you know, $2.99, which is, I think, so worth it. Um, they make editing even on your phone really, really easy. Um, you know, I like, am, I'm on my phone all the time. So that's the, just the device that I'm the most familiar with. And so, um, you know, I just try to get the most use out of that. Um, and I, and I do think that the, the technology has caught up to like some of the professional cameras so, so much in the recent years. Without a doubt, there's actually quite, quite a lot of good, uh, quality with the phones now, nowadays as compared to a lot of the lower end, um, DSLRs. I mean, it, particularly it, you kind of have to get around the $2,000 range with the DSLR to right. really start to actually pull away from the quality of the phone. So if you, yeah, for anybody who's low budget phone is 100%, you're going to get extremely great quality. It's honestly more about the edit and the framing of the shot. But I, I mean, personally, with my, my career, I've been shooting with a DSLR. I, I always love them. Uh, I always like to get great quality. And there's something uh, in the DSLR that you can't get out of a phone, which essentially you can shoot in a raw format where, because every camera and every phone kind of has its own built-in color curve correction and contrasting and exposure that it's automatically adjusting or applying to the photo digitally, even DSLRs, but you can shoot in a raw format. It takes a lot more editing, but you get the highest quality photo possible, at least in yeah. my experience, without having to deal with any auto correction, any auto adjust, any auto color correct. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite something. So, I mean, it, it depends on how much money you've gotten, what kind of pictures you like to take, but personally, I always stick with the DSLR. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I am now. Like I, I'm getting into the editing and, you know, I, I edit and um, video mostly. And um, yeah, I'm getting in, I'm getting to the point to where I can edit and be consistent enough to, um, for, for the, you know, so if the audience sees it, they know it's my content. Like I, li I like my feel for it, you know? And I think right. that, that's what I'm doing for the sesh, you know? Um, one of our, one of our campaigns, uh, kind of an interview show. I really like that. Um, that kind of darker kind of vignette blurred background we got some we got you know what is it the, the daylight um um artificial lights going on but then the uh what is it called uh um tungsten 
you know, boom, right there on the, on the, the host and the guest. So uh, we'll get into it, but that's, that's about, you know, being creative, being creative. Um, most of, I just dropped the poll. Uh, most, of, most of the folks in here would like to learn about video. So I think we're right on it, focus, uh, you know, hit, hitting, all of the, hitting all the points. Uh, learning your camera's settings, right? Um, Alex talked about it. Uh, editing, you know, I, I, whenever I take a picture and if I'm going to post it, I go and I edit a little bit, edit it a little bit within the, within the, um, and I shoot with the iPhone in the iPhone. It gives you a lot of, a lot of, uh, capabilities, you know, and this is, I think it's a little bit more than just, uh, slapping on a, um, a filter, you know, uh, what, what, what y'all's experience with that? Shooting with phone. Oh, well, you know, I love it. Um, yeah. and in fact, I actually, uh, have talked to Alex about this because some people film this way mm -hmm. and then other people film this way. Right. We, we like this way, right, Alex? Well, it depends on where you're posting it. That yeah. comes right. down to right. knowing your platform. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's like straight up and down for stories and for, you know, for your TikToks. Yeah. But sometimes if you're going to go Facebook and you want to get a nice full shot with a good wide breadth to it, you, you got to mm -hmm. turn the phone sideways. Yeah. See, so you got to really know what you're going for, what you're shooting and everything. Me personally, I shoot this way mm -hmm. um, just because I usually have one of those uh, kind of things on the back where I can hold the phone, mm -hmm. uh, the little like pog things, you know, <laughs> so I can do like that. But, um, you know, when it comes to a phone, um, whenever I get a new phone, I just play with it for at least a couple of hours until I start shooting or anything. Um, the main thing I see is people get new phones and they don't go through all of the settings. Right. Uh, what is that? You know, uh, when we were young, all of us used to go through stuff like crazy, you know, <laughs> so let's keep that mind state yeah. when we're getting new phones, new technology, things like that. Uh, play with it as much as you can. Exactly. Um, do it to where, you know, you can basically <laughs> just uh, know the ins and outs of it. Uh, my phone has one thing, and I know we're talking about video, but um, my phone has one thing called portrait mode for uh, taking photos. And when you get into portrait mode, your photos come out a little bit better looking, not going to lie. You know, so just little stuff like that uh, can just make your uh, quality go from zero to 60 just by pressing one button. You know, and it's not even you angling the camera any different. Like, it's literally effortless. All you have to do is just hit that one setting button and your whole game has changed now as far as your uh, picture and video quality. Exactly. And you know, the learning, <clears throat> learning the technology, learning the, the phone or the camera, you know, it, uh, overcoming the technology helps you uh, get creative, you know? I think, that's my opinion. All right, audio. Capturing great audio. Of course, you know, if you're shooting with the phone, shooting in your camera, most cameras catch audio, decent audio. Uh, Chef Wendy gave me a, gave me a, when we first started talking, you know, gave me the, um, the tip of, you know, use headphones, you know, use external audio, uh, when, when recording with the phone, when doing webinars like this, um, it's a little bit better, a little bit better audio. Uh, when I do it, I use a zoom H4n. I don't have it with me. I should have had it. So, but you know, I, you know, I edit in, I edit video in premiere pro. So it's, you know, it usually requires better audio, you know, and I, and I have a microphone, my, my, my host has a microphone. So it's always, um, you know, taking off the audio, I let, you know, laying the, laying the tracks down, the, the video tracks, of course it has audio. I take off the, uh, the original audio and put on the, um, the, the high quality external audio. It's a, it's an extra step, but, uh, you know, it's 100% doable with, um, you know, with your camp with, without doing it like that. Right. Uh, anybody else have any great tips for capturing great audio? This is for the video, of course. Um, I yeah, I, I think we we talked about using um, AirPods. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I first did like a Facebook Live and I was showing people my my urban garden. You know, I'm walking around, but it was like really hard to hear because you're outside. And right. you know, if I'm away from the camera then all of a sudden you couldn't hear me and and same thing with doing my virtual cooking classes you know you got like sizzling you got like all these like you know kitchen sounds and so I think having a mic is so so crucial when you're doing it's not something you have to consider when you're doing photos but when you do videos like capturing the audio right the first time is so so important so so far I've been using just my airpods but I have definitely been starting to 
research into um, doing some like pretty simple lavalier mics. Yeah. Um, the Rode um, mobile interview kits, th those are pretty good. Rode R-O-D-E. Uh, for anyone who wants to look that up, lav mics are amazing. And the reason why I want to look into them um, is because as good as the AirPods are, they um, cost a lot of battery, especially if you're um, also streaming, you know, that's something you always have to think about is like, you don't want your equipment to die of like no battery in the middle <laughs> of your class and things like that. So what I'm doing now in, in the interim is, you know, having only one AirPod in and another one on the charger. So as soon as this one is beeping at me that it's low, I, I just do the switch and it's already connected. But that's like a, you know, very low grade band-aid solve. So uh, I'm definitely wanting to invest in a more legit lav mic. Yeah, that's what it's about, you know, it, iterating and, you know, it's just little, little iterations like that that take uh, take it to the next level that definitely comes across in the content. The audience recognizes that for sure, for sure. Um, so background noise. I've done a lot of filming outside vlogs and stuff like that. I was working with a startup and my partner and I love to shoot outside. Um, there's two trains of thought here. You know, of course, there's the high quality content with nothing in the background, you know, no background noise, the jackhammers, the dogs barking, whatever it is, you know. But then, you know, like Gary, Vayner, Gary Vaynerchuk, Vaynerchuk says, just do it, you know, just get, just capture the content and get it out there. Um, what, what do you, what do you think? What's your experience? Of just yeah. capturing Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry, you said just capturing it and getting it out there? Yeah, like, um, I guess taking into consideration, maybe, yeah, m mostly with background noise, we'll stay on the audio. Um, do you try to minimize background background noise? Yes, especially <laughs> um, <laughs> then sometimes because I right, I haven't got my you know fancy uh -huh. love mic. Yet. Um, I I try to um, decrease the background noise, but not in. I, I guess also it comes back to the depending on the format, right? Because like. Yeah. As much as we're talking about all the ways to produce the most perfect content, um, some of the most engaging content on social media is not overproduced because people also just want, especially if you're trying to create a setting and a mood and a party vibe, like, you know, I think bringing people into what the real environment is like and is really important too. So sometimes you don't want it to be too staged and to overproduce because it's it's also about re reflecting that authenticity all oh, right on yeah exactly all right anybody else have anything mm -hmm. i mean yeah what you got oh yeah. you got go for it uh, my, my big thing is because there's not always a way to avoid background noise and sometimes it can be sometimes you just have that inspiration in that moment where it's not necessarily a good time to film but to do it anyway the thing to me, and I've seen some of those kinds of videos that really allows you to hear what they're saying, kind of comes in when there's a caption. Because when you can, even though there's a lot of background noise, if you're reading the caption along with hearing it, it makes the voice seem that much clearer. Yeah, exactly. So next, uh, choosing music with impact. Um, I This is one of my favorite things. Uh, I love kind of, especially, you know, I. Whenever I'm getting getting into a new project um, that requires um, music, I, I love going through the um, the, uh, the resources, the the, the platforms online. Uh, Envato Elements is the one I use. Um, Epidemic Sound is another one. It's just you know you're listening to really good music and you're thinking again. You, you know you you know the purpose of your content, what you're gonna do with it. You know your audience. Um, you know the feel uh, that you want for it. So now, I think music's one of the best ways to. I guess get that get that across right and thinking thinking in the long term it, it also helps you you know establish the sound of your brand like what is it do you want an upbeat do you want like a hip-hop do you want like i mean you know the, the sky's the limit with audio you know um yeah do, do you have any do you have any advice for choosing great audio or music yeah okay. um your music, you know, you got to you got to feel it, you know, and, and that's how I do it. When I'm when I'm, you know, putting music to a video, you have to make sure it syncs, you know, and make sure that everything's hitting right. And 
not only that, it gets down to the point to where, you know, say you're, you know, dropping something into a skillet or something. As soon as that, whatever it is, drops into the skillet, that's when the hi-hat should be hitting in your music, you know? Right. Or, or the bass is dropping in your music or, you know, it's got to sync to where um, it, it, it's almost like the, the, the video is dancing alongside the music, honestly, you know, and, and syncing yeah. with the two. It's sort of a weird yeah. thing, but as you're creating, you can almost feel it, you know, before you even post the video, you're like, oh, yeah, that music's going perfect with this, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then you can totally tell when it's off, too, you know. Right. Um, but one thing that I wrote down here, even uh, tapping back to the last um, thing that we were just talking about, when it comes to noise and everything, um, don't sleep on the voiceovers as well, you know, and I know I said that earlier. Um, if you're out in a loud environment and say it's hard for you to capture that audio or something like that, um, just capture the video, you know, get it all down there and you can always go back and speak on it on a, a, a voiceover later down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, what I like to do as well, and this is something that we did on our pilot recently for cooking with Brooksy, uh, the cooking show is, um, there's music playing plus I'm doing a voiceover. Right. So that kind of makes it sound even a little bit more hotter. You have, you know, your video going with your food and stuff like that. A little music going. It's not too loud. It's not too low. It's just right. And then you come in over with your voice sounding like butter, you know, and you're just like, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing today. This is what I'm working on. All this good stuff. Make sure you check me out on Instagram. Goodbye. You know, and it just makes it makes the whole piece of the pie. Uh, come together, you know, so so don't sleep on all those elements. And sometimes it takes a while for you to create these videos, right? Mm-hmm. Because not only are you filming it, but then you got to do the voiceover part. Then you got to lay down the music. Then you got to make sure everything looks good. It takes a while. But yeah. anything that takes a while, right, is going to most likely be better, you know, than anything that you just slapped together and threw out into the world. So um, definitely consider that because uh, you might mess around and make a good video just off of adding those minor extra elements right right on yeah anything else we should consider with audio um i think you know different tools and platforms where you can source video um, or music for your videos uh i know if you're just like producing it on um you know insta or tiktok they have their own music um but art art list is another good one where you can source uh music from premium beat uh dot com another good one so, uh, and it's not too costly. Um, so just like for when you're, whenever you're doing a video that's maybe more serious, that doesn't just live on social, those are good um, sources to kind of look up what else is out there. Um, and I think um, you guys kind of got into it with the, like the choose the right music for the mood. I think also pacing, if you're cutting videos together or if you're panning um, or you're editing in a way that like a certain, speed and pace with your video you want to make sure to choose the audio that fits that pace because you know when it's mishmash it just it just like the viewing experience is just kind of uncomfortable yeah yeah I'm a, I'm a fan of editing to the beat you know so I, I like you know I like hits you know definite cuts on the hits you know transitions yeah I, that's 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 my I, I like that I'd probably do a little bit too much I have been accused of doing it too much but that's okay it's, uh, you know, it's creative, you know, what's up? Uh, another thing on the music too, that I was thinking of um, that, that Wendy was bringing up, uh, looking at the other music sources, um, use your local people too. You know, there's yes, all kinds of local yes. artists and things like that. So if mm-hmm. you use local artists in your videos, what's going to happen? They're going to share it because their music is featured in your stuff. You're going to share it. Now everybody's getting views. Everybody's happy. You know, don't sleep on that. I know, uh, you know, all these new hip hoppers and Drake and all that is cool to listen to. But um, consider that, too. You know, if you uh, have some good local artists, uh, tap in with them, you know. Yeah, yeah and I good, love that yeah, message, point. because um, I know something you said earlier in your intro that really resonated with me was, you know, how important it is for people of color to be in this space. You know, um, cannabis was built on the black backs of brown and black folks and who are now still even you know incarcerated and mm-hmm. uh, not really receiving that equity that is really deserving of them and i feel like um in just looking at what are some ways that people of color can help each other it's through that building of community you know because we may not have the access we may not have the wealth we may not have all of these investors flooding 
to us to give us all this like Wall Street money the way that mm -hmm. a lot of um, you know white corporate money just get that kind of access but the way that we are strong is in creating community so I feel like I, I really love your suggestion about promoting local artists and everybody kind of cross promote because building that kind of community is how we're going to sustain getting more people of color in this space couldn't have said it better yeah couldn't have said it better nailed it very good very good thank you thank you Shay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. All right. Lighting, lighting. Um, I like this. I like this quote. Um, I didn't know I was fil doing film noir. I thought they were uh, detective stories of low lighting. You see, um, I think that's a really good example of, you know, just somebody that was just kind of figuring it out, you know, um, that that kind of became something, you know. Um, yeah, I like that. that. That really resonated with me, you know, because, um, you know, I, I would say up until about maybe a month ago, I would say lighting was my weakest part of the whole production process. But, um, you know, especially working with the sesh, it's kind of, you know, I, it's like, I, I like, I don't want to say that I don't care, but like, I don't know, I guess I'm leaning a little bit more onto what, uh, what, what I like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just getting a little bit of creative, getting, get, just getting creative. Um, yeah, so overall, there are two real, I guess, you know, broad categories of lighting, um, indoor, I'm sorry, I put indoor versus artificial, yeah, indoor versus, or I guess natural versus artificial is, is what it should say. Um, yeah, this is really important when you're doing location scouting. Um, if you have great uh, natural lighting, excellent, it does, it's, it works really, really well. Um, but if not, you know, kind of, um, yeah, see what you could do about, uh, you know, getting some, some artificial lights. They're, they're getting, you know, more accessible. They're getting more accessible. Um, my setup right now, my kitchen, my area is a little bit dark. I have this, this, you know, thing behind me, but I have a big um, kind of a, a panel light uh, right here with um, kind of a diffuser. So it's kind of softening it up a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, uh, sh uh, Alex, do you have any, advice on light what's your experience with lighting? oh in my experience <laughs> i know you're saying lighting doesn't in my experience lighting has been everything so yeah uh particularly when you're working with a green screen background yes wow right. did i underestimate that the first time mm -hmm. it, trying to key out a green screen if you didn't light it evenly is a nightmare yeah but lighting in particular when it comes to food it really it depends, like you were saying, it depends on the style you're going for because there is a lower lighting style. There's a style where you kind of put the light behind the food so it casts a little bit of a shadow in front of it, which kind of makes it look a little bit, I don't, I don't know the word I guess I would use is deeper, like the image and the, the video, like the shot just looks a little bit deeper the way you can light it from behind instead of from the front. Like it, um, a suggestion that I, I personally, I prefer, um, natural light when I do mm -hmm. photography and artificial light when I do videography. So it's, it's oh, kind nice. of a, I like them both for different uses. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I see I'm, you shaking your head. <laughs> I'm very, very into natural light. I think lighting, um, you know, planning your lighting is really important, you know, and we, we talked a lot about pre-planning uh, and in your pre-planning, definitely think about the light. How can you, before you try to, you know, Google what kind of light should you buy, you know, lights can get really expensive and you don't necessarily always need it. And I think as a, as a chef, what I want to shine the most is my food and food looks the best under natural light, at least the kind of food that I cook, you know, it's yeah. very like, farm to table, very like, I want to show off the natural beauty of the food too. Um, and my, my food tends to be very colorful. So I need a lot of lighting to create that like to bounce off of all those colors. Um, so I think, um, you know, whenever you can, you can like shoot outside those that has like really nice um, natural light. If you can't shoot outside for whatever reason, maybe shooting it next to a window. Um, you know, you can set up your table next to your window, your whole, um, or whatever you're shooting on. I think um, just whatever you can do in the pre-planning to maximize the light, is really really important and even now when I'm doing my um, video live streams um, 
you know, I, if I know that I'm doing it at 3 p.m., then I, the day before or whatever, before I actually do the class, I, I set up the camera and I look at, okay, what does the lighting look like at 3 p.m. right now? Because also we're changing seasons. So the light looks different at different times of the hour. So, you know, if you know that you're going to go live at a certain hour, you got to make sure you know what that light looks like between and, you know, because I'm shooting in the kitchen, I have natural light and artificial light. So looking at how those two play into each other too. Um, Cause for example, I have a, uh, in my kitchen, I have a light right above where I'm cooking. So sometimes it has this like really, depending on the time of the day and how hard the, um, you know, not uh, how hard the natural light is. Sometimes it creates a really bad glare on my table where people can't really see what I'm cutting, what I'm plating. So, um, you know, I've also tried um, putting like just a really light film on that light so that it kind of forces that ceiling light to be more of a diffuser, um, like kind of diffuse light. So, you know, different, you know, pretty low budget tricks that you can do to um, create a set in your um, home, you know, especially during now during the pandemic where we have more limited um, spaces to shoot. Um, I think it's really important, but yeah, always test out your light, um, especially if you're gonna go live. Um, yeah, and I'm very, very partial to natural light whenever yeah. possible. Yeah, it, it comes across in your, in your content too. It's, yeah, very, yeah, thank you, Chef. Re really good lessons learned there, yeah. Lighting is one of those things that you just you just learn, you know, over time. Yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of setting up, experimenting, practicing. Hey, and I, I've been under the camera a long time, and I'll tell you, I even myself, I look best in a natural lit setting. You know, whenever we go to a studio or something like that, it's just like, man, who is this guy on camera? You know, I don't even know. You know, but right, outside right. in natural lighting. It's amazing, you know, so definitely don't sleep on natural. I mean, it's free, you know, yeah. so you might as well take advantage of it uh, uh, while you can. <laughs> very, very true. Very true. You know? <laughs> all right. Now the fun begins. It's the day of. You've done all of your planning, preparation. You have all of your equipment. You're, if you're, you know, you're cooking something, so you have all of your ingredients. Um, yeah, setting up, making adjustments, um, train. This is kind of training your eye over the course of time. You train your eye for what's best. Uh, Chef Wendy, you mentioned at the very beginning, it's it's a really good to have. Um, it's a it's you you said it right. It's a it's a production assistant. It's a PA. You know that's that's my background. Um, there to make sure everything looks good, everything's in the in the right place. Um, I know. Yeah, uh, Alex, you had some really good. Um, uh, insights on when you were setting up with the uh, magical butter those shoots what do you have what do you have to contribute here man well uh man the setup really it, depending on what kind of size crew you have streamlining mm -hmm. your process is everything because you don't yeah. realize how long that setup is going to take right and and particularly if you are working with a chef uh and you're doing the live cooking there are a few pre-cooking steps that they have to do so they still want to get there an hour early but Sometimes they'll, you know, an inexperienced shooter will have the chef show up with the production crew and it's like, all right, so you do your cooking while we set up. And it's like, no, they can't start cooking when you start setting up with, even if it's just some of their pre-cooking, it's going to be done way too soon and it's going to be ruined by the time the shot starts. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's critical. It's critical that you set up and you coordinate everything properly with your setup and how long that's going to take. It's... Lost, lost a lot of a lot of good stuff that you just kind of have to throw out clean the bowl again reset it <laughs> yeah <laughs> very it's true very true very yeah. bad memory. sometimes you get all the way to the end of a shoot and and don't be afraid to do this now but you'll get to the end of the shoot and the product doesn't look good don't yeah. release that video especially if you're not live it's okay to do a whole shoot and the product turns out bad like a good story. We were doing uh, red velvet cupcakes at Magical Butter, and we were doing them from scratch. We weren't using an artificial food coloring or anything, uh, and they ended up turning out brown, not red, <laughs> with the uh, the natural coloring that we were trying. I think it was like a pomegranate extract or juice of some sort that Joey was using to try to make it a red velvet cupcake. It tasted <laughs> like one, but came out brown. It's like only at the very end for the final beauty shots did we realize we can't use any of that. <laughs> But you, you yeah. have to stick to your creative guns and, and make sure you don't release bad content. Even if it takes three hours to 
just end up with a dud. <laughs> yep, it happens. It, it happens. does. It does for sure. Yeah, this goes back. Trust your instincts. Be critical. You know, tough yeah. decision. And um, uh, unfortunately, I have to go to another appointment right now. Sure thing. Um, yeah, but I just want to um, leave with, uh, on this last note, um, you know, everything Alex said just now, uh, you know, is, is I, I'm like already, you know, thinking flashback to when I had similar experiences and, you know, um, as, a, as an entrepreneur, I think sometimes we get really hard on ourselves and in we get frustrated and we just, you know, have a lot of negative talk um, on ourselves. And, you know, and I think what you have to remember is, you know, all these people, you know, came together to do this shoe together and we already put so much effort into it. The best thing that's going to save a bad product right now is good attitude, you know, is like centering yourself to, you know, to just remind yourself that this process it is iterative, you know, like, um, and also as the chefs out there, like you're a chef, of course, like this content creation part is a learning for you. And, you know, it can feel very much like, you know, you have this imposter syndrome that, you know, oh, it's not good enough or whatever, but you're never going to get good enough unless you have a good attitude to keep trying and iterating. And so I think you know, in those moments, it's just really important to give yourself a little pep talk and get back in there with good attitude and keep the energy up because um, that's what's going to really salvage that shoot even if you're not getting that perfect shot. Um, but um, so with that, um, I want to thank everybody. Um, thank you. And, um, you know, I look forward to collaborating more with Brooksy, Alex and Joseph and the Cannabis Chef Union. Love what you guys are doing out there. Keep building community. Um, and now uh, you feel free anybody to reach out to me on Insta. I'm happy to answer any more questions that you may have. Sure. Where can they what, find what's you? What's your Insta? Um, it's at when you're here. I will type it out to the chat. It's yeah. when you're hungry. W e n y e r hungry. A little play on my name. Um, so yeah, um, make sure you follow me and you know slide into the DM with any more. Um, questions. I'm um, happy to help, especially you know, the, the cannabis chefs out there. Right on. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. And um, yeah, check her out. Uh, really appreciate it. It's a good transition because we're gonna, now we're going to get into the uh, kind of the social media, which is where we, uh, where we kind of shine. Right on. There it is. All right, let's continue, gentlemen. Uh, was there anything else uh, that you wanted to add on the production part of it? Uh, we talked. We didn't talk too much about photography, but you know, well, you did, Alex. Uh, setting up, um, making sure the food's not out there for for too long. Um, you know, props. What's up? So especially with photography, not leaving it out yeah. too long. The video, yeah. you can get in there and do a couple of quick shots, but it's like when you're when you're staging a photo, you really are are playing with the background a lot. You're staging the food. Never be afraid. Actually, that's a good point. Never be afraid to have a stand-in plate. When you're setting up, before yeah. the food is cooked, prep your final sex shots. You know, make that, make that good shot set up already. You know where the plate's going to be. You know how it's going to sit. It's very important to have that prepped ahead of time. Exactly, man. Mm -hmm. All yeah, right. Facts. I'm going to launch this poll right here, and then let's get into the post-production. Organizing the content and, uh, you know, finding out what we're going to do with it. Um, choose and learn your editing software. We talked about, you know, the, the, the power of the phone to edit you know, the photos right quick. Um, apps out there that can, you know, you can record on your phone and edit on your phone, uh, piecing everything, to, piecing, you know, different clips together. You can lay down, you know, tracks, you know, music tracks. You can do lay down voiceover. The technology is, is uh, really, um, you know, making this stuff very accessible for us. If we just spend spend a little bit of the time, uh, like you said, uh, Brooksy, overcoming the technology, um, don't let that don't let that stop you. I made the the conscious choice a few years ago when I started working on my startup. I'm like, I came in one day to my partner. I'm like, I'm not gonna let technology, uh, you know, be a, be a barrier, you know, for you know for this. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of set out to you know make that make that the goal. So I, do, I, I edit on Adobe Premiere Pro for video. Uh, DaVinci, I've edited on, edited on Final Cut. Um, learning Photoshop, I do graphic design on you know, multiple, a few other platforms. So 
we're, we are going to, we have a lot of excellent resources for this. Um, at, at the end of it, I'm gonna do a little call to action for everybody. Uh, send us an email, uh, hit us up in the DM, and we're going to, uh, I'm gonna compile all of, the, all of these resources, the apps and everything and, and send it out to folks. But um, uh, we, talked, we talked a lot about uh, editing for the platform, you know, um, one, one thing I like to do, this is just what I like to do, um, especially because Instagram used to be really, really um, like all about the square, you know, mm -hmm. I take most of my photos in square these days. Um, okay. Instagram's getting a lot better, especially, you know, even the video, you know, you can shoot, you know, uh, widescreen. Uh, what's right. that landscape? I get this landscape. Um, yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Brooksy? You know, um, I, I think, you know, shooting portrait style is the best way to go. I'm always going to say that, but the landscape, mm -hmm. I get it, you know. Um, but overall, you know, we're talking about editing, um, you know, really, and I, I'm, I, Adobe Premiere is too advanced for me. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't get anywhere near that. I actually use an app called InShot. InShot. Um, in shot yes and you can download that on your app store um I, I believe it's available on android and iphone but um it's called in shot i n s h o t and um the logo for it it looks just like instagram you know but it's a editing you know uh app and um you know editing's tough man um you know especially for somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing so going into like adobe you know and all of that is very intense so i just use InShot. um you can make things look really clean on there you mm -hmm. can lay down your music you can lay down voiceovers it's kind of just like a all-around uh user-friendly sort of editing app to where you can't really go too far but you can do just enough um but then again too you know a lot of videos that i've done through InShot. They could have definitely been better if i had just taken it to a different platform and not have been afraid so that, you know, I want to mention too, because you're saying don't be afraid of the technology. You know, a lot of us are, you know, a lot of us put up barriers for ourselves saying, oh, well, I don't know how to do that. Oh, well, I can't do this. You know, when at the same time, the technology was invented to help us, right? So point. why are we pushing it away? So um, the biggest thing, and Alex knows this, um, Adobe Photoshop is one of the most intense programs I've ever dealt with in my life. Alex can attest to this. I taught myself Photoshop in about a year. Um, taught myself to the point to where I could use it functionally to be able to add logos to my, you know, projects. I could, you know, do some, some course editing and really do some good stuff on there that, um, you know, I never thought I'd be able to do, you know? So don't let the technology scare you. Um, there are easy ways to do things, but just know that easier doesn't mean better always. Um, you know, Adobe Illustrator is a very intense program, but you know, every other couple of days I take a look at it, you know, and I'll jump mm -hmm. in there and I just start pressing buttons. That's right. all I do. I don't even teach my, I just go in there and start pressing stuff and just see what happens, you know? And, um, of course they have YouTube videos, uh, definitely use YouTube to your advantage. Um, ask your friends. Because a lot of the time, um, you know, your friends are definitely going to know uh, some tricks that you might not, you know. But um, definitely uh, don't be afraid of the technology. Definitely uh, use it to your advantage. And if anything, just pull up a video on it and uh, go for it. Yeah. Right on. You yeah, got anything I mean, on? I've always done the Adobe suite. I mean, I've, I've always yeah. edited Photoshop, you know, Illustrator, Premiere. Always work with Premiere. Premiere is probably mm -hmm. one of my favorite video editing programs and, and something that I personally love. And it's one of those things when you, you have to know what you're trying to accomplish. When you, In my situation, when you're churning out a large quantity of videos, there's a certain technique to the filming that allows you to then use a feature inside of Adobe called multicam sequence. Mm -hmm. Where essentially you just take three or four shots that all have the same audio lined up and you turn it into one sequence where you can literally watch the playback and just click on which camera you want to be active as if you were controlling a live stream switcher. And then when you're done watching through it, it's edited. Yeah. Mm. Very good point, man. Good point, man. Yeah. It's like, and if you know, you need to churn out a lot of things, but there's also Adobe Premiere Rush, 
which is their mobile app for people yeah. who are on the go. So, Brooksy, you may also want to check that out. That's pretty mm, interesting. Write that so, down. Yeah. So, yeah, I've worked on it a little bit. It's good. Come into the desktop version a little bit as well, kind of help you yeah. help you break into that one. Yeah, and we'll we'll share links to to all of this, <clears throat> all of these uh, resources. Um, so we have all of our footage. It's edited, and we're going to distribute it. Um, one of one of uh, this one influencer, um, we we kind of know her. Um, um, said, "Don't post all of your content at one time." You know, for, so for example, you're going, you're doing your photo shoot for your, uh, you know for your cooking session, don't post it all at one time. Schedule it out. You, I see you. <laughs> I Thank see you. you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you for this. I you think know, you said it and somebody else said it. Oh my gosh. So, you know, here in this, I, I preach this and Alex knows this. I preach this all the time. Mm -hmm. Build an arsenal for yourself, you know, build an arsenal to where you have so much content that one day you could just take a break for a month or two and just have so much stockpiled that it, it, we, it, it'll seem like you never even left. You know, um, what we tend to do is want to put everything out there all at once to be in the now because of social media, you know, but you, you have to learn how to finesse social media. You know, um, I still post pictures that I've had from four years ago and people think it's brand new content. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just because on those photo shoots, like you said, Joe, I didn't release all the all the pictures. You know, I maybe only put out one or two or just one video or whatever. And I saved the rest, you know, put it on a hard drive or whatever. Keep it on your computer. And then a year or two later, you can repurpose that stuff. Um, and then even if you're repurposing it, those those angles that you didn't show before are now new angles, new content, even to the people that have already seen it before. This is, this is new now because it's coming at them from a different angle or a different top-down shot or whatever it may be, you know, but um, stockpile your content. Stop putting out everything at once, you know, build an arsenal for yourself so that, you know, if anything, God forbid, happens or say you need to take a trip or say you just don't feel like being on social media for a while and you just want to do the bare minimum and just post, you can do that. You know, you have so much content now stocked up from over the ages that you can really just play with it and finesse the internet, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's really where the, uh, the social media scheduler comes in. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we have, a, we have a photo here on the slide, uh, later, um, later.com, I've used them. I prefer Hootsuite, I guess, a little bit, um, you know, a, a little bit over later, but um, yeah, there's pl plenty, of, plenty to work with. And they're both, you know, they're both free tools. They give you limited access, for example, I think Hootsuite will allow you to manage three, three social media channels. So there's, there's your Instagram, your Facebook. Um, what is it? Your, uh, Twitter or uh, something, I guess. Yeah, Twitter. Twitter, exactly, is another one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right there. Schedule it out. Upload the content. Make your captions, hashtags, ads, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, vary your social media platforms, but have a plan for each. Again, this goes back to creating content around um creating content around um you know create, creating content for the plat for that platform yeah um have a clear really clear call to action again know what you want to accomplish um is it if it's uh advertising for a pop-up uh, a good a great an excellent model i see lately is chefs uh putting out like this week's menu mm. um and then saying dm me for this you know uh that's simple nice and easy you're you're on insta there most of it happens on instagram um yeah i really i like it i like it yeah yeah i like that too uh simple is better you know i i hate seeing these long captions you know and i even i'm guilty of it too you know i'll write yeah. three paragraphs and i'm like yeah what who is reading this you know um right. your content should explain it all True. You know, um, your content should speak to the audience way better than those words. And if you think about it, that's the reason that you're making the content. You know, if we weren't making content, we would just send letters back and forth and just type it to each other, you know. But the reason that you're making the video and the photo and everything is to reach those people, not through text, right? 
is to reach them so they can actually see the video, see what you're doing the whole nine. So uh -huh. speak to them through that video. You know, um, it should be to the point to where you're making content and don't even need to leave a caption. You just post the video and everybody knows what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely guilty of, of long captions and I don't know, you know, all honestly, of us, all of honestly, us. Honestly. Yeah. I, honestly, I'm testing it out, you know? Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's more for like LinkedIn, I guess, you know, I guess, again, that's, you know, content specifically for the platform, but yeah, we'll, right. we'll see, you know, test it out. I just think for Instagram, I just think for Instagram, you got a two line maximum, you know, you're, once you're, you go yeah, past right. two sentences, you know, people are like, all right, uh, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, it's not story up, time. You gotta click for more, like, no. No, yeah. you know, and I just want to scroll, you know, Instagram is a scrolling app, you know, you True. scroll, you look, you scroll, you look, you scroll, you know, so really, again, you should be reaching people directly through that video, you know, that's why the voiceover thing was a good tip, um, things like that, because you're, you know, they, they, they say, uh, you know, they make the song cry, Jay-Z says that when talking about music, if your beat is really good, then you make your song cry, and people can really feel the beat, it's making the song cry. You gotta, yeah. you gotta make your content cry. You know, you gotta make your content cry, man, to where people can hear it crying. They can get the message and everything and not have to read anything. They can just get it all through your video, all through just looking at you. Very true. You're right, man. Mm -hmm. uh, um, <clears throat> so we're gonna go on to the next thing. Uh, uh, Brandy, um, Chef Brandy, she's a member of the Cannabis Chef Union. Welcome, Brandy. Uh, she's here supporting. Uh, she asks, uh, what is the next trend in, in media posting? I'm seeing VR filming, et cetera, indie shots, vintage staging, um, how to connect more to the next generation to capture the almost jaded. Mm. Really creative, really creative. Like that's a, that's a kind of a good combination of creativity and technology, you know, mm -hmm. um, somewhere in the middle. I think that's, honestly, that's where the, this, this next generation is, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what, what do you think? Uh, there's a lot there. T TikTok, of course, is like the biggest thing out right now, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm, I'm getting used to it. TikTok's, you know, wild. Definitely yeah. a, a younger audience on there. You know, let's, let's, you know, we all know that. But um, TikTok is okay, you know, but I honestly would use Reels more on Instagram just because Reels is the same thing as TikTok. But when you use Reels, you're reaching that audience on Instagram that is actually going to spend money. You know, TikTok is yeah. cool because you can get those views and things like that. And that's a good thing because you want to connect with the younger generation. So by the time they're old enough and have credit cards and all that good stuff, they already know who you are you know but uh, for right now i would use reels personally just because the audience that um is really buying from chefs uh i believe is more on instagram than tiktok personally mm -hmm. right yeah i yeah, agree and a lot of the a lot of the technology part is going to be led by the, the the platforms you know like for example mm -hmm. tick like you said tiktok and they have the almost it's essentially green screen uh thing behind you you know that's, you know, you're talking about it and then you kind of like move your head out of the way and then this is it. That's a, that's a, you know, that's next generation. Um, cool, cool next feature. Level. Cool it feature. Is, yeah. You know, TikTok's got some neat stuff, you know, um, and, and as far as the creativity, right, of reaching the younger generation, you know how I've been doing it is I just watch how they do videos. Yeah. Um, I'll go on TikTok and I'll just look at the way that they do it. And, you know, my, the, when I go to do it, it might not be <laughs> the way that they're doing it to a T, you know, because the younger generation, they're pretty slick on these phones, you know. Yeah. But um, I try my best, you know, <laughs> to get it to that zone, you know. And as long as you're trying your best to get it there, the more that you practice, you're going to get it there. You know what I'm saying? But you just have to practice. You're not going to do it first try. But, um, you know, I would say just watching their videos seeing the way that they do it. I also know that the younger generation likes fast videos. Yeah, um, right. they, like, they like videos where everything's explained within five seconds and then they can just scroll. Um, if you're doing like a 30 second video, they're not watching that. They're, you have, you, the, for our generation, you have about 15 to 20 seconds. For the younger generation, 
you got about three to five seconds to really get them, you know? So it's like, it's like, you know, the faster the video, the better, but also with speed, you don't want to lose quality and you don't want to lose the message, you know? So you have to get that message in there while going very fast. And it's a, it's an art, you know, it's something that you have to practice, you know, it's not something that you're just going to jump in the ring and just start putting out bomb content next day. You know, you gotta, you gotta play with it, look at the way that they do it and kind of match that motion and then go from there, I guess, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's almost like, kind of like, like a resurgence of the vines, if you will. I don't know. If you guys remember vines? vines. Yes. That, yes. That, that Twitter bought them and shut that down for whatever reason. <laughs> but <laughs> That was a beautiful platform. Was that seven seconds, I think, is the... I think so. Yeah. Seven like, seconds per vine, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, so that so seven or under is really a good target. And that's actually the beauty of Reels is it allows you to cut things together. You know, say you filmed for two hours, you can then just cut it together into a quick seven seconds of just flashing between shots. And that's the style of a reel or a TikTok mm -hmm. in some cases. So it actually worked. It's actually more on the popular style trend. It's interesting. It's kind of come back. Yeah. Right yeah. On. And it's yeah. almost like uh, Instagram wants you to be able to do that. So with the user friendliness of that, they want you to be able to create content that these younger generation type people are going to going to like, you know? So um, again, reels, I think is the best way to go. You know, reels, when you're filming in there and everything like that, it just kind of sets you up for success just to be successful with this younger generation. And then um, you can also download the video too. Once you post it to your reel and post it to your story, you could download that video and then run off and go post it to your TikTok. You know what I mean? So that way you're doing it in the reels. It's pretty much user friendly for you, has it all set up good. And then once you download it, take it right over to TikTok and just upload it. That way you're killing two birds, one stone. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Uh, Brandy, uh, Chef Brandy, I hope that answered your question. Um, there's a lot, you know, a lot to it. It's, it's kind of like, like, it kind of goes down to here. We have on the slide, learn the anal analytics. Uh, how, how long are people watching your videos? You know, um, are people clicking on your link up in your, up in the bio, um, in, in Instagram? If not, then it's not working. You just gotta, you know, really learn learn the analytics, learn how to find the analytics, decipher them, what they mean, and then take action. Take action on it. You know, yes. uh, yeah. for the staging, uh, try try different staging. You know, put put it's putting your dish in different contexts. You know, uh, think about the audience. You know, put it in context for them. You know, are they do they like the you know the vintage, the old, the barn? You know, old like you know that kind of feel or you know, like, like Chef Wendy, where it's just like really bright, natural light, you know, it's different, a lot of different contexts there. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Brandy. And I also just want to add, because uh, sure. you were speaking on uh, insights, Joe, because mm -hmm. um, I don't know if a lot of people know how to find insights on yeah. their um, accounts. And so I just kind of wanted to put that out there real quick. Um, if you're a chef uh, making content, you should switch your Instagram to a business account. Yes. Um, don't keep it as a personal account. Switch it to a business account. And then I don't know. I, I'm sure you can't see on my phone here. Is that, is that legible to you guys? No. It's not at all. Okay. Well, you can see here I have a picture on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. If you go below your picture on Instagram, there's going to be a blue hyperlink there that says view insights. That's where you want to go to check out all your analytics having to do with the content that you just posted. Now, if you go in there and you see that certain things are happening, people are saving it, people are, you know, sharing and things like that, then you know you're on the right track. If you look in your insights and it's low, zeros and ones and twos, then you know that the content might need some zhuzhing up. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's, there's a few, there's a few steps in there, but it's totally worth it uh, in, in, in setting up an Instagram business account. And I think it's just a matter of or, uh, connecting to a Facebook business account. And I'm not even sure you have to. I don't think so. I think page. you can just go in there and create it and it's free. You know, okay. um, you just switch from a personal account. I think you might have to go into your Instagram settings to do it. Right. Yeah. But um, once you're in your account, you just go into your settings um, and then it'll say switch to a business account. You're right. And that's what you want to do, uh, especially if you're doing content for a business. That, it just mm -hmm. makes sense so you can see all the insights and analytics. 
Right. Yeah, yep. you're, you're absolutely right. And what I was thinking about is if you're using Hootsuite to post on Instagram, maybe even later uh, as well, they're going to they they're gonna require you to go into Facebook and do some, t- take a few extra steps there. But um, okay. um, we talked about identifying your audience. We talked about testing the content. Um, next, and this is what we, we see a lot of this in, with the um, uh, with the kind of with the kind of chef union the chefs in, in the union um creating a great profile creating a great bio um a, a good, again a good call to action in there um you know you have limited space in in instagram uh make it make it you know take advantage of that space make it uh, make it have have some impact and um yeah wherever you're wherever you're putting your putting yourself out there kind of chef union there's other you know chef uh culinary like marketing platforms um yeah take some time to create an excellent bio you know tell tell people like what what your specialty dishes are um your your history your accolades your experience yeah Mm -hmm. and what and what you and your goals for the platform how can they can contact with you yeah i mean it's technically your online business card you know Uh, when people visit your profile you know, they need to know what's going on, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've had people afraid, you know, in those profiles. They're like, oh, well, I don't want to put my email or my phone number. Or, you know, this is, you know, Instagram is just like in public. You know, if you were at an event handing people your business card, it, it's, it's technically the same thing. You don't know those people at the event. So, you know, the people on Instagram, you don't know either, you know. So it's kind of like, how how far do you want to tap in, you know, with the public? Are you Are you just trying to lightly tap in or are you trying to go full force um and if you're running ads doing things like that and then have all your full contact in your bio uh you can't really lose right there you know um especially if you have your phone number if you have your direct contact in your bio you're gonna win every time exactly you got anything alex I've never been good at bios so no (laughs) fortunately not nothing to contribute on that one (laughs) I can say this too, um, you know, emojis are very good in a bio. Um, I know it's limited on space, but um, the proper emoji placage in your bio could really make it pop even more. Um, But too many emojis is the wrong way to go. You know, you want emojis to accent what you're talking about per line um, or just one overall emoji for the, you know, total thing. But don't put too many emojis and don't put too much information, you know, uh, keep it short, sweet, uh, two lines at best, you know, and even my profile, I have a lot of hyperlinks in there and stuff. I really need to clean that up to be honest, but, um, you know, simple is better, you know, just saying, Hey, check out my stuff right here. Boom. Or, Hey, want to contact me for more contact me here. Boom. You know, uh, simple like that is always, uh, going to be good, especially if you're selling food. Yeah, exactly. Brandy, uh, Chef Brandy made a, a, a suggestion or more a comment about uh, using an eggplant in your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. Catches the eye. That too. You already know. <laughs> yeah. All right. And lastly, you know, do the footwork. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's like, like Chef Wendy said, it's iterative. You get better every time um every you, you find out uh, where you can make adjustments um like 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 she said she's gonna change change the way she captures audio um upgrading your lighting um yeah just just look to do the the next the, your next um i guess shoot or production a little bit better than the last you know um then you you know you're gonna start uh, what is it called uh, delegating some of these responsibilities you're gonna get you a pa uh, you're going to get you, uh, maybe, you know, a, a photographer that has the eye for it, a videographer that has the eye for it. Yeah, it's it's about getting better every time. So, uh, you know, uh, what you got? I was just going to add to that. You know, Michael yeah. Jordan, right, one of the greatest basketball players in the world, was in the gym every day. Kobe, right, one of the greatest in the world, in the gym every day. Um, even if you're not shooting stuff to put it out there, just keep shooting. You know, if you're making something, just keep shooting and practicing. Because uh, the better you get with that phone and those cameras, the better you're going to be when it actually becomes showtime. 
right? So um, even if you're just at home making food for the family or whatever it may be, bust out that camera and just start, you know, shooting. You never know. You might even mess around and come up with some cool content when you didn't even mean to, you know? So um, practice makes perfect, man. You should always be practicing in your gym. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, thanks everybody for joining us. A um, uh, couple last minute things. Um, any, un un any unanswered questions? Sorry about that. I wasn't tracking the chat, but it looked like Alex was uh, tracking it. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna make sure to go back and answer any questions. Uh, feel free to hit us up. Uh, the can of chef union at gmail.com. We're going to be there. We're going to um, kind of get all of the resources together, links to where you can, you know, get some inexpensive equipment, um, some of the, some of the, the free apps, some of the editing software, different cameras, all of that good stuff. Just, uh, we'll even put the slides there. Okay. And remember, this is going to be posted on the can of chef union YouTube, right? Gentlemen. Yeah. Um, yep. Like I said, uh, email, email the Kenneth Chef Union at gmail.com or DM us for, for these resources, any kind of questions. Um, hey, go follow, the, go follow the panelists. We got um, Brooksy Hustle at Brooksy Hustle. Uh, follow the Kenneth Chef Union. We have a few of them with the can, at the Kenneth Chef Union or at the Cannabis Chef Union. Hey, what, you know, we didn't even talk too much about the higher Kenneth Chef. Um, you want to give a, a quick uh, introduction to that? I do, we, definitely. Uh, yeah. I do, definitely. You know, um, make sure you go to hireacanachef.com. It's really the uh, bulk of the business. Our main goal, again, is to get cannabis chefs hired. Um, you know, the main thing that we see is not enough opportunity within the community as far as uh, cannabis chefs getting hired and uh, staying consistently hired. So that's what we're looking to foil. You know, we would love to have these chefs hired. Um, we're available in all 50 states. We're literally, uh, if you think Uber, but just for can of chefs. Mm -hmm. um, you can go on our website, find a can of chef that's near you. You uh, go ahead and inquire that chef and they pull up to your event, uh, home, wherever you would like them to cook. And uh, they'll prepare the meal, they clean up. They basically do everything and um, maybe even give you a small, you know, presentation about the food and where the uh, infusions came from. And they, they sometimes they get pretty intense, you know, it, mm -hmm. it depends on the chef that you hire. Yeah. But um, again, you just go to hireacannachef.com. Go and check out our list, man. We have so many great chefs on there, um, literally from New York to Los Angeles, uh, Seattle to Florida, you know, I mean... Yeah. Just great people, uh, great minds. We have nothing but great respect for all of them. And yeah. uh, they're hard workers, man. They're very hard workers. So make sure you check them out. Cool. Uh, any last words, Brooksy? No, that's it. Make sure you follow my friend too, Alex, though. Um, yes, Alex's 100%. Instagram is crazy. It's Alex underscore S-F-F-Y. <laughs> yeah. Alex, if you don't change your Instagram to something, <laughs> 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 to something better than that. <laughs> Alex underscore S, S is in Sam, F, F, Y. Make sure you follow uh, our COO as well. Yeah. 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 Any last words, Alex? Um, other than, you know, thank you guys for joining us. Obviously, follow all of our pages because we're, mm -hmm. we'll drop nuggets of knowledge throughout the day, you know, on any one of our Instagrams, particularly Brooksy Hustle's Instagram. He seems to drop a lot of good stuff. Definitely a lot of good memes to so keep him on. <laughs> Yeah, definitely keep an eye on his stuff. But uh, outside of that, just keep cooking and stay strong. Make sure to keep pursuing your dreams no matter what. Exactly. All right. And with that, I'm Joseph Martin, uh, PR director for the Kenneth Chef Union. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I hope you got some, um, some knowledge out of this, some valuable information. That's, that's really what we're about, you know. Um, yeah, follow me at Real Joe Schmo. It's right there on the, the slide. And... Until next time, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Thanks, Joe. All righty. Bye-bye.